Want to trigger video like a musical instrument? You can using MIDI and VisiBox. You can control videos, images, and even webcams. And I'm going to show you how to do all of that in this video after this bumper. Today I'm going to show you how to use MIDI on a device like this one, or this one, or this one, or this one. Here's one. This is the popular Roland Octopad. It's Octopad right there. This is a guitar <laughs> MIDI device, one that is both a keyboard and uh, finger pads. And these are particularly expensive, but very high quality uh, and work really well with VisiBox to let you uh, control videos in the same way that I'm controlling them here with my fingers. So we've got some other videos out there that explain how VisiBox works. There's a general overview video that walks through all of the menus and explains exactly how VisiBox works, all of the little inner, inner working parts of it. But in this video, I'm gonna kind of delve into MIDI. Let me first explain what MIDI is. Uh, and again, you'll find better videos out there explaining this than, than I will. But MIDI started uh, back in the 1980s uh, and was sort of defined by this five pin MIDI port on this MIDI guitar of all things. We we'll probably know MIDI more from these other, other devices, keyboard devices. Uh, and pretty much since the 1980s, devices uh, for, particularly for electronic music, when USB came into existence, um, people devised, smart people, devised a way to use the MIDI protocol over, USB, over the USB protocol. And so we gained devices like this, which is called a MIDI keyboard, uh, but doesn't actually have a MIDI port on it. This one has a uh, I think that's a mini USB port on it. This one has a USB B port on it. Suffice to say, a MIDI device does not need to have a MIDI port to be a MIDI device. All of these devices are MIDI devices that speak the MIDI protocol over USB. Usually when connecting devices to a computer, the easiest way to do that is through USB. And that's what I'll be talking about today. Uh, these MIDI devices that are connected to this computer. In VisiBot, under the VisiBox preferences menu, you're going to find uh, several different options for MIDI. Uh, we can define and, and uh, which MIDI inputs VisiBox will listen to and which MIDI outputs VisiBox will send to. When you plug in a new device uh, into VisiBox, it will immediately show up as a MIDI input. It will be checked off as a MIDI input. So if you uh, tap it, VisiBox will respond. Uh, however, it won't be selected as a MIDI output. The reason is so that if you connect a uh, MIDI device that makes sound uh, to VisiBox, VisiBox won't start playing uh, videos and start sending MIDI notes to your sound making uh, devices. So what I've got right now connected is this Arturia beat step that you can see right here. Uh, uh, and I also have it enabled as an output. Enabling it as an output will allow devices that have lights like this beat step. So when I switch songs here, so you can see the number of clips that are playing and I'm triggering uh, the clips and you can see them, uh, the clips playing in the output window here. If I go full screen on the app, you can see uh, these things show up on the TV behind me here and we can uh, trigger things. So, uh, uh, so that's generally how things work. I'm going to go out of full screen here so that we can kind of dig into, dig into things here. So again, by selecting, uh, this device as a MIDI output, we can send MIDI to it, which in this case lights it up, uh, to show us, uh, uh, what, what clips are playing. Of course, the thing with all of these different MIDI devices is they are all kind of default to different things. Uh, you know, a, a regular MIDI keyboard has specific notes that it's going to send for each of the, the MIDI keys, but which octave it is offset by, or what's gonna happen uh, with um, pads on a, on a keyboard like this. We have uh, a, a common 
device in MIDI applications, uh, an entire MIDI map system um, that you can get to through the preferences MIDI map um, selection. And it opens this window that allows you to map your devices. So let's connect a device here. Um, and I will show you how to map just sort of a random device to VisiBox. So uh, we've got the MPK Mini selected as an input here uh, because we want to set up the MIDI map for the MPK Mini. If you wanted to set up a default MIDI map for any new device that you're connected, if you're not happy with what we have set up as the defaults, you can uh, select that here. Omni uh, as an input channel is great. It'll listen to any, uh, even these days with USB um, MIDI devices, channels aren't as important as they were in the 80s. Uh, but um, so Omni is fine. There's a situation where your input and output may have different names. Uh, we try to match them as best we can in VisiBox, uh, but if for some reason you need to select a different name, as you can see, when, when we select the input, it'll automatically select the same output with the same name. But if, if for some reason they're not matching up, you can select that here. Uh, and then uh, sending on a, a single channel, channel one, uh, again, usually works. These defaults work pretty well. Probably all you will need to do is select uh, the input. Um, and then um, what we've got now are all the, the default. Uh, so when uh, note 60, MIDI note 60 comes in, it will play clip one. When note 61 comes in, it will play clip two, uh, and so on and so forth. You can uh, use either MIDI notes or MIDI continuous controller messages. I won't go into what CC messages are, but if you know what those are, you might want to use them. Uh, but for most people with most devices like this, uh, uh, MIDI notes are fine. There are some devices that are, are gonna be a little bit more focused on sending continuous controller messages. These are continuous controller controls uh, here and VisiBox can work with those uh, if, if you need to, but usually I would suggest using MIDI notes if that's an option for you. And so here you can see, basically this is the map. Uh, these actions are triggered by these notes or uh, CC messages. Um, and, and you can just see them all here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to clear them all to start with. Um, and then we're going to go through and learn new messages from the MPK Mini. So uh, let's start by uh, we want to play clip one. And if I hit learn here, uh, both note and CC go green and it's listening. It's learning. Uh, and if I hit, hit pad one, uh, it's going to trigger uh, um, now it's going to trigger clip one. And I'm just going to go through and, and select all of them here. And you can see it going through. And we've uh, gone all the way through clip eight uh, with these um, MIDI keys, the, the, the finger keys on this device. Uh, we call them pads. They're, they're MIDI pads. Um, uh, and now let's, uh, while we're here, do... Um, previous song and next song, those are good things to set as well. Let's say uh, middle C is next song and uh, previous song is uh, B. And now if I uh, cl click escape here, um, it will stop recording. Or if I if you have something that's learning, you could just hit the learn button again and it will, will um, turn off the green uh, selector. And now what you can see when I go back into busy box here is that if I hit the middle C key, we go to the next song. And if I hit uh, clip one, you know, these pads and because we're also sending to them and they happen to receive uh, as um, as MIDI notes, the, the the light up note is the same as the uh, as the key that they're assigned to. Um, We've got them lighting up to show us uh, what's what's available. Let me go full screen here and you can see it happening a little bit more. So again, next song will stop playing. Uh, it stops the current song from playing. So uh, if you set this up, for instance, 
on a device like this, um, maybe you would set it up so that this would be next song and this would be previous song. And so uh, this is clip one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you know you could control all those from here. But as soon as you're done, the drummer hits the last note of the last song, you click next, you queue up the next song and stop the current song and the screen goes blank. But then when you click, uh, uh, when you tap the mini note, maybe it's you've got drum pads or you've got uh, um, a pedal like that. You can control everything like that. And I up and down. In reality, you probably want to you want you probably want uh, your previous song and next song to be a little bit easier to find than uh, these ones in the middle of the keyboard here. I should mention also that um, there's the ability in here to, uh, in the MIDI map section, there's the ability to um, import and export. Uh, you can export the current MIDI map. I might export this and call it MPK Mini uh, and, uh, um, and import existing ones. And uh, we're starting to build a library of uh, kind of common um, mappings that you might wanna use as the default with various different MIDI controllers. Um, there's also an expert mode here, which I will just leave as an expert mode for now, but it allows you to, uh, to uh, light up the LEDs on devices like these soft steps. Uh, um, I will mostly leave it to the experts to create uh, those maps, but, but it is available to anyone. Uh, um, however, they are, as I said, importable and exportable. So we're gonna put them up on uh, the Space Age website uh, specifically for uh, uh, the, the, most of these devices that I've showed you. Um, and, uh, and you can download those and just import them into VisiBox and then it'll make working with a device like this uh, a lot easier because it will light up showing you um, what song clips are available for uh, each song that you're in. VisiBox also lets you control what happens when you re-trigger or resume uh, any given clip. Uh, so for each clip, there's a setting for what happens when you resume it or what happens when you re-trigger it, what happens when the clip ends. Retriggering is particularly uh, interesting uh, because you can set it up to uh, uh, pause and resume, which will have the effect of basically pausing the video and resuming the video. Um, so you can kind of freeze things as you go, um, or uh, you can um, pause them and restart from the top of the video. So it pauses and then restarts from the beginning of the video, pauses and restarts from the beginning of the video, uh, um, and so on. Um, this is actually particularly interesting when you use uh, uh, a webcam. So let's let's add a camera clip here. And now when I select this, it's me. I'm here. Uh, and actually, we get this cool thing. If we do this, we get kind of multi-me. Um, and if I set the camera, you can get uh, this kind of freezing effect where you... Um, and you can trigger all that through MIDI um, using VisiBox. You know, the things that I'm demoing here are the basic things that VisiBox does, but you can do them with MIDI, MIDI uh, as well. Um, so I can go to my guitar solo and uh, rock out uh, and then go back to the uh, normal stuff that's happening in the video. There you go, MIDI in VisiBox. Uh, if you've got additional questions about it, feel free to uh, visit our website. We've got a message board where you can ask questions and we're happy to answer them there so that everyone can, can benefit from the answers. Uh, you can always comment on the YouTube video. And as I mentioned, we've also got a, an in-depth video uh, about uh, VisiBox that kind of walks through all of the different things that it does. We're gonna put it up here. Uh, and you can uh, click there to watch our in-depth uh, video about VisiBox. Subscribe to our channel, uh, like this video if you like this video, uh, and um, yeah, uh, hit the bell icon and we'll let you know when new videos come out and uh, you can keep up with all this audio visualization stuff that we're doing with VisiBox. Uh -huh.